Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to go from a plain text of a novel to a network. We're going to do a little bit of text analysis, a little bit of cleaning. We're going to extract people's names, and then we're going to create a network using NetworkX in Python. This is an addendum to the Python video to show you how you might actually use this in practice. Now, I decided to just choose a really famous novel, Pride and Prejudice. I got it from Project Gutenberg. It happens to be one of the most popular, if not the most popular novels that they have on their website. So I just downloaded it, and I'm going to show you how to do this in a pretty basic way. Now, there are a lot of approaches you could take. Um, we could actually use natural language processing to get out the named entities from this text and draw the network that way. But I went ahead and just found a list of characters here that I'll be using to identify the people because I do want to keep this video relatively short. Now, when we look for these names, we'll do a little bit of cleaning up and attempt to do some disambiguation, but we're not going to try to make this perfect. I'll leave that up to you as an exercise. The novel is short enough that you could go through and actually find all of these mentions manually without too much trouble. And there are highly marked up versions of this online out there. So what we're going to do is we're going to load this into a Python script, clean it, and do the analysis. Now the first step in doing something like this is to actually look at the text itself and try to figure out how you might start approaching it. Now I know that I don't care anything about this boilerplate at the beginning of the Project Gutenberg book, so I might want to actually start my analysis from, say, here. So I can clean up the text and cut this part out as I load it in. Now an important question to ask if you want to do a network analysis of a literary text is what constitutes a relationship? Now if we want to say these two characters interacted and they have some sort of meaningful relationship, then we would need to do something a little bit fancier than what I'm going to show you. I'm actually just going to show you relationships based on proximity within the text. We could get fancier than that, but again, this is meant to be a quick demonstration. So I have to decide, how do I want to chunk up my text? Maybe I want to say, well, everybody who shows up in a chapter together, that's a relationship. Or maybe, as long as they show up within 100 words of each other, that's a relationship. Or maybe even, they have to show up in the same paragraph. So I'll show you how to do these three things and make a network out of it fairly quickly, okay? But this does require a little bit of cleanup. But by looking at this, we can actually come up with a way that might work. We'll know that anytime there's a new line character and then one, two, three, four, five, six spaces, that actually should just be compressed into a single line because we don't need that extra white space. That should just be a single space there, okay? So here, You'll notice when there's a new paragraph, it's simply two new line characters and then those six spaces. Okay, so knowing this, let's go over to this AustinNet Python file and let's start working with it. The first thing I want to do is I want to import the regular expressions library because I know that I'm going to use that to clean this text up a little bit. I also want to import network x as an x because this is what I'm going to use to work with my network. So let's load the text in from file. This is pretty simple. I'll just use a context manager on my pride.txt. And I'll make sure I specify my encoding. Uh, this isn't necessary on a Mac, but generally on Windows, you want to do that. We'll say text equals rf.read. OK? So now that will load our text into our Python script. Now the next thing is to clean it up a little bit. So if you remember, um, we might want to chop off the beginning of the file. So I don't need anything prior to chapter 61 here. And this is the first instance this appears. So what I'll do is I'll simply say text equals text, text.find, and chapter 61. Because this will find the first instance of that, and that just cuts off the uh, table of contents. Now, of course, this will find this C in chapter 61. So we'll go ahead and add um, the length of chapter 61. Now we want this to go to the end of the text, but we don't want this legalese that's at the very end of the file. So we'll go ahead and find where it ends, which is right here at end of the Project Gutenberg ebook. 
So I'll just go ahead and grab this and copy it over. Now, if you're working with a different file, of course, you would need to figure out what works for that. So we'll say text find and then this, and then that'll work. Now, I could also use um, dot strip, which will remove the white space at the beginning and the end of this string. So let's go ahead and print, say, the first thousand characters of this novel to make sure that we've properly removed things. And okay, great. We can see that it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. So now we need to figure out how to remove all of this extraneous information. So we don't need all of these weird spaces and we don't want these new line characters uh, to be appearing where they are. So let's take a look at this. So remember that within paragraphs, we can actually replace new line characters and these six spaces with just a single space. So what that should do is that should condense this so that there are no longer new lines within paragraphs and each paragraph is only separated by a single new line. So why don't we give that a shot? And here I'll say text equals re.sub and then we'll give it our pattern which is a new line character and then a space six times. And then we'll replace this with a space and we'll give it our text and now let's see what does this look like. So now, this has been transformed to chapter one, new line. It is a truth universally acknowledged, new line. So this actually looks perfect. The only small problem we have, of course, is this extra space at the beginning of every paragraph. But when all is said and done, that's actually not that big of a deal. That's not going to affect our analysis, okay? So here's where we decide, well, how do we actually want to divide up the text? How do we divide this text? Well, we could divide it into chapters, and that's simple enough because each chapter just starts with a chapter and then a number. So we could say chapters equals re.split, and then if we split on the regular expression chapter uh, slash d, and this is going to be either one or two digits, and we'll give it uh, text. So what this should do is this should actually split it into 61 chapters, plus it'll have whatever came be before chapter one. So ideally, the length of this list is going to be 62. We'll see if that's the case. And it's 62. Perfect. So we might, instead of this, you know, divide into paragraphs and I'll say paragraphs equals text dot split new line. So now if we look at, say, the first paragraphs and we'll look at maybe the first three of them, we should see chapter one, then each paragraph is its own item in a list. Yeah, so we have chapter one is the truth universally acknowledged and so on. So now every item in our list is a paragraph within the text. So we're getting somewhere, right? So let's now start to think about getting character relationships. To do that, we need to get a character list. So here I'm going to say um, with open characters dot txt, I'll read this. characters equals rf.read.split slash n. Okay? So now if I print characters, we should see a list of the character names. Great. So Elizabeth Bennett, Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy, Mr. Bennett, Mrs. Bennett, and so on and so forth. Another issue we might have is you'll actually see that in our character list, if we look at this, there's no period here, but there is a period in our original text, so Mr. Bennett. 
So there are a few ways to handle this. Uh, the easiest would probably just be to delete all of the periods in the original text. And I would do that with um, just text.replace. And then I'll give it a period and I'll replace it with nothing. And there's no reason to maintain sentences here, so why don't I just do that? Now, I could be a little more conscientious about this and say, well, only if it's after Mrs. Or Mr. or Mrs. or so on, then go ahead and take care of it. Alternatively, I could just add the periods here. But we're going to do it like this. Now, one issue with this that you'll probably be quick to pick up on is that a lot of times Elizabeth Bennet in the text is referred to as Elizabeth or Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy is referred to as Mr. Darcy. So I want to make sure that I'm accounting for possible variant names, and there are ways we could programmatically do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do this semi-manually just because it's a lot easier to be precise this way. So here, I'll just go ahead and go into this characters list, and I'm going to add the alternate names. I'll say Mr. Darcy, Mr. Bennett is fine. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, and I'll say Jane, I'll say Mary, and so on. Now, I don't know if all of these people are actually referred to in all of these ways in the text itself, but just really quickly, this will suffice, okay? It would be an interesting exercise to see if we could generate these programmatically, but I'm going to stick with this. So now we actually need to do a little bit more processing to make sure that our characters are handled properly. What I can do is I can say characters equal, and I'll do a list comprehension. So I'll say character split on the comma space, because I had a, a space between all of these, if you notice that. OK? And then I'll say for character, character in character. So now when I print this, we can see that we have a nested list that contains all of the names and the alternate names. Now, this isn't necessarily super comprehensive, but it's a good start. So now we're actually ready to get character associations, right? Uh, so there are a few ways we can handle this. We're going to use a dictionary. So here I'll say character association dictionary, and this will equal a new dictionary. So this will save edge information. So now, depending on what unit of measurement I'm working with, so if I'm working with chapters or paragraphs, I'll iterate through that textual unit. So I could say for paragraph in paragraphs, do this, or this could be chapter in chapters. Um, Either way is fine. Uh, let's actually do chapter in chapters. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create an object that will keep track of all of the characters that appear together in whatever unit I'm looking at. Here, chapters. So I'm just going to say appears, and this will be an empty list. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to do is I want to go through my character list, and simply check do they appear in this chapter. So I'll say for character in characters. But now I want to look at all of the individual names. So then I'll just say for name in character, because these are the subnames essentially. I'll simply say if name in chapter. Then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and say, let's remember that name. But I do only want to keep track of one name for a person and not, let's say, Elizabeth and Elizabeth Bennett, right? So what I can do is if the name appears in the chapter, I can add the first item in this character list to this appears list. So I can say appears.append character zero. And to make sure that I don't double count anything, I'll simply break. So what will happen is it will break this for loop. It'll stop going through it. So it'll only capture the first instance of it. So now I should have a list for every chapter that tells me who appears in it. So I'll up print appears. And we'll take a look at that. 
All right. So it looks like we have a list for every chapter uh, in which we have the characters' names, right? So here we have Elizabeth, Jane, Catherine, Mr. William Collins, and so on and so forth. So it's different for every chapter, which is excellent. So now all we need to do is we need to build relationships between these people for the edges in our network. To do this, I'm going to use something from Iter Tools. So I'm going to go to my top, and I'm going to go ahead and say Iter Tools. These are just tools in Python that help with iteration. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to say, so now what I can do is I can say relationships equals Iter Tools dot combinations, and then I'll give it the appears, and I'll tell it how many things do I want to pair up, and it'll just be two. To double check that this works, I'll say print list relationships. So Python, we'll take a look. And here we see now for every chapter, I have what's essentially an edge. So I can use this as my edge list. But I do want to make sure that I'm saving these relationships with a weight based on how often they occur, that is in how many different chapters. So what I can do is I can iterate through this. I can say for a relationship, in relationships, then I'll simply check, does the relationship occur in my character association dictionary? So if relationship in character association dictionary, what I'll do is I will say character association dictionary relationship plus or equal one. Else character association dictionary relationship equals one. Okay, so now this runs through all of the chapters and it will give me the character information. So I'll print character association dictionary and let's see if that worked. Of course, I need to spell print correctly. And there we have it. We actually have all of our relationships. So there is a possibility that sometimes this appears list is not going to be in the same order, so we might get some duplicate edge information here. To prevent that, I can simply sort this appears list. So I'll say sorted appears, and that should prevent that from happening. And that looks pretty good. So I don't know for sure if that was an issue, but now we know it definitely won't be. So now we actually have all of our network information for these chapters. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create my network using network x. So remember, I'll just say g equals nx.graph. So I'm going to go ahead and add the node information. And if you remember, all of the names that go into our network are simply the first item in the character list. So I'll go ahead and say for character in characters g.addNode, and I'll add character 0. To add the edges, I simply want to go through this dictionary and put them in there. So here, I'll simply say for edge weight in character association dictionary dot items g dot add edge, and I'll give it edge zero, edge one, and I'll say weight equals weight. And that should be it. To make sure everything works properly, we can try to print the nodes. So we'll, let's just try print g.nodes to make sure it loads in properly. Now we can see it looks like we do have a list of nodes with these names. That's great. Uh, let's print the edges to check on that. This also looks good. Let's see if it added the weight properly. So we'll add edges.data, run this. Looks like that worked just fine. So now we should be able 
to draw this network. So I can say nx.drawg. And I should uh, make sure I have matplotlib imported. So I go up to my top where I've done this off screen, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and we'll do plt.show. And there we have it. There is our network. So here we could say, if we want to add labels to this, we'll just say with labels equals true. And now we can see that we have our labels. So this is how you get to a basic network just from processing a text. Now, of course, we might decide we don't really like this way of approaching it because just because you appear in the same chapter, that's a pretty general relationship. To change that, we could just come back here and actually just change this right here. Then we would be measuring paragraphs. So if I run this again, we get a different looking network and perhaps a slightly more meaningful one. Now I would say that this is not great practice because we should go back and rename these variables or think about writing a function that generically does this for us. I'll leave it to you to figure out how to draw connections based on close textual proximity, say within a window of 200 characters, because I think that would be a good exercise and you're already most of the way there. I hope this was informative and I hope you really enjoy doing network analysis with Python. Take care and thank you.